I will say this. I like the fact that in 2023, people make money doing anything. Yep. So yes. the fact that OnlyFans, you starting OnlyFans. You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> no, no, no. Shannon starting an OnlyFans. <laughs> like yep. that lady on TikTok that was selling the pink sauce. Y'all heard about her? My get you? No, no, it was like a different. <laughs> <laughs> what like, kind of pink sauce are you talking? It was about? like a mysterious pink sauce, but oh, it was okay. like it was like oddly pink, yeah. like Robitussin. Anyway, she went viral. She almost got canceled because people were like skeptical about it. Fast forward, you know, ten months later, she got a deal with Walmart, and they're selling it in Walmart's in North Carolina. Get out of here, man! What is the Crazy. pink sauce? Like, what? I don't know what it is, and the, the <laughs> way people, but it's a it's a pink sauce for for food. Like a dipping sauce. Oh, okay. it's mayo ketchup. I guarantee it's not. It's not. It's like in the okay, video. Okay. Mayo aioli. <laughs> there, you, make, you gotta make it fancy. If you say aioli, oh, it's a sauce. It's custom. The reason people were asking why is it pink? Uh, apparently, she was using dragon fruit for it. Wow. So it's a weird sauce. <clears throat> that is a weird sauce. I, I'm interested enough to want to taste it. That's what she said. But also, <laughs> I would try it. We're here. We're doing it. Uh, 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 uh. What was the, there was a hip thrust along with that, uh. A little bit. Now you caught it. I think it's best to not ask any questions. Sometimes I've learned, listen, I have teenagers. Don't ask questions. You don't want to know the answers. <laughs> Expand on that. I feel, I feel like it came from experience. Mm. If, no, but <laughs> I was a teenager once, as were all of us, and we know what we did. Mm. I don't want to know. I'm just going to assume you're doing teenage shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Open ended, <laughs> very intentionally. It's got to be feeling up your girlfriend in a car. Remember those days? I don't remember those. When I was a teenager, the most exciting thing I used to do when I was grabbing the girl's butt. That was like prime. I guess I'm. A, I'm I mean, I'm middle school, not a yep. teenager. Sixth grade. That to me was like. Nowadays, that'll get some trouble. <laughs> I'll get you in a lot of trouble. Yeah, nowadays. Consent was a little different. Yeah, that was consensually grabbing the butt, by the way. Okay. But a lot of people were doing unconsensually. That's different. Also true. And that was still kind of like a gray area back in the day. Now it's like, <laughs> ew. Gray area according to who, though, right? It was subjective. <laughs> I, lo this is, I love this because, like, the rules are like you're just kind of writing them as you go because that's the world we live in now. It's like you just kind of fly, fly by the seat of your pants. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it's... um. Even though I'm exposing, like, it's just middle school. Yeah. But it's crazy that some people might look at that, like you said, nowadays it goes, whoa, that guy, you got to be careful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like said, it's just. That guy's a perfect guy. <laughs> that guy's touching <laughs> butts. Yeah, no consent. <laughs>
I'll give you the basics. The basics is think Big Bang, right? Just you can think of an explosion and then things moving in one direction away from the explosion. Infinitely moving. That's the universe right now. We're the universe continues to expand and it's happening right now. Right. Quick summary. Yeah. yeah. All right. We're millions of millions of years away from that. I can't, dude. See, again, we're, we're here. Want, we are here. We're I'm here. trying. Multiverse. We'll circle back. Things like that, you know. Multi yes. Also Multiverse. Yeah. Wow. Wasn't ready for that. Yes. We could we could spend some time here, guys. Yes. But before we get there, and, you know. so uh Soul Cosm yeah. is it? How did you arrive at that? that kind of that name also oh, soul cosm yeah i mean it's actually just like soul being my name cosm being um you know making your own world you mm. know so basically just it's my world okay i like that the definite you know what i mean yeah, soul yeah, yeah, yeah. cosm my world you know? I, I appreciate my, it on a basic my level, yeah. little world in a way your little world hmm. came from a point where i was like you know just pretty hermetic about things out not really socializing much just in a my own little bubble just creating artwork and like, yeah soul cosm i like that so it it happened organically and then you kind of took it yeah because soul came like from just me kind of just being in a relationship with a girl and like getting kind of reigniting a flame with graffiti and then I kind of was just like, all right, well, I'll just write soul mate or something or soul, you know, like, and then like soul. And then I kept writing soul and then it became kind of a popular thing. And then I, don't know, I just stuck with it because yeah. soul is like, it's one of those things like you need. I mean, yeah. For everything. Yeah. Like soul is like essential for making art great. It is the know? art, right? Yeah. It's yeah. you on, on the thing or right. you expressed in, yeah. in one way or various mediums, yeah. this recording. So like it was corny, like soul is like, it's like a corny name, you know? But like I just stuck with it because it means something, you know, to me, especially yeah, like yeah. soul. Like you need soul, soul is what you need in art to make it great, you know. I like that. I like that. You need soul to all make it great. All forms of art, obviously. You know, like yeah. Music. Everything. Yeah, everything. The actual painting. Yeah. So actually, humor me because <clears throat> I'm I'm like super ignorant when it comes to like paints and such, and you can you can go as hard or as as not hard as you want to, but like. Is there a particular um, uh, paint type or preference that you have that, that helps you express art? Obviously, this is like watercolor, right? So that's not watercolor. This is something right, else, right? right? right. Yeah, I would say so. I would say that like uh, a medium's like acrylic uh, leans more towards someone who's a little more active mm. and wants something to dry faster just so I could layer and things like that. Okay, okay. So um, whereas like oil is just something where it's going to be um, it stays wet for a while, so it's easier to move around in the moment. Mm. But it's also a lot messier. It's just it takes a little more time. Yeah. Um, I can't say it's like messy. You know, it really depends on the artist. But it's one of those things that if you're used to working as an action painter, yeah, you know, you're gonna get oil like a little bit of oil <laughs> is just gonna get everywhere. I mean, yeah. I I've watched enough TikToks and reels and YouTube shorts to see people doing all kinds of interesting artistic shit. And the room is always an absolute mess of paint all, all right, over the place. So, yeah. like, these are people who obviously they ran on studios and they have just, what, drape cloth everywhere, just catching all the right, right. garbage paint. Yeah, that's awesome. But yeah. the stuff they make is incredible, right? So it's like, hey, man, you can't make this without getting dirty. It's right, part of the right, experience, right. right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Talk about that. Like, I mean, it, you even, like, have... for example, just with the students today, you know, it's like I just got dirty just from, you know, helping them out, yeah. you know, and, you know, making pallets for them and things like that. It's like it just, it just happens. It's just part of it. You know, it's part of the nature of the medium. You know, you yeah. teach art at um, at Legacy Academy. Here okay. In Springfield. Yep. Wow. Awesome. Okay. How's that been going for you? It's good, man. It's yeah. great. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Very. It's nice, man. I didn't realize you were <coughs> a professor of art here. <laughs> uh, art teacher. Art professor. Yeah. Nah, man. I, I, I love it. <laughs> Be cool if they called you that. Some do. <laughs> do they really? They, you know, they're from. Fair enough. Latin America. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Lingies. America. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's always going to be there. Yeah. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah, man. That's, that's gosh, what a privilege to be able to kind of share your art that way. I know it is. Yeah, it's cool. It's, it's a privilege for me to see art mm -hmm. being made, you know, and like kids, they don't, a lot of people just don't believe in their work. You know, they're always like, easily discouraged because I just can't make a line straight or it just it, the fear of not 
working with a medium, you know? So allowing someone and encouraging someone to just be like, just do it, you know, like, don't worry. Like, there's no criticism. Like, just make art because you know? art's beautiful. You know, it doesn't matter. You know? oh, so yeah. just like put your soul into it, put your effort into it, you know, like, that's it. So it's cool to see that, you know? I love that. I love that. I, <laughs> I think it's uh, it's it's that lesson right that kind of haunts us, and we've we've kind of touched on this you know over some episodes of just like the artist critiquing their own art so harshly, yeah. When other people are awe inspired by other people's art very often, and it's just like this weird feeling of like ah it's not good ah, I, yeah. I would I would change yeah. this and like right. learning to accept that is like a life's journey. Right? Yeah, let go. I feel like if you're a true artist whatever that is. I don't want to make that seem like a pompous term, you know, like oh, an artist, you know, <laughs> but it's just a way of being right. Like yep. you're just, you create and then you, you criticize yourself. You look back at it and you're like, I could have done better. I could add to this or it wasn't finished or something. You know what I mean? But like, you just did it. Like you just had to create it in the moment. Mm -hmm. That's it. You just have to make stuff. You know, what, what type of, what type of, <clears throat> where do you draw inspiration from? I know that's a, a this, it could be like a lot of things, man. You know, like sometimes it's just other people's work. It could be like other people's visual work. And I'm like, man, I want to do something like that. And like, I start to do something like that and it just turns into something completely different. Mm -hmm. And that's usually how like my artwork is. It's like, I want to start with something. Cause I'm like inspired by something. I'm like, I'm going to go with this now. And it turns into something else. And then, uh, music sometimes, you know, like I'll catch like a line from something. I'm that's interesting. What do you, what do you mean by, but like music kind of like you get visuals in? Yeah. Like, okay. That's kind of like what, uh, Eddie, shout out to Eddie. Mm. Uh, he kind of mentioned something like that about like synesthesia, seeing, synesthesia. Yeah. I'm like, probably saying it was, was it colors or was it? <clears throat> yeah. He sees. Oh, synesthesia. Yeah. Yeah. Synesthesia, it's, yeah. uh, when you see, it could be various things I believe. Right. It's like, I know color was an important piece of it. Right. right it's like, like seeing the world through color, but like interpreting in different I can't articulate. It. I it like say, math. like say, like like say, a music numbers. note might be in a certain color. Yeah, yeah I okay. Think, I, think, yeah, I remember yeah, yeah. him saying colors. So you said when you listen to like a certain line, like it, it'll inspire like what, like a like a vision or like a color palette or yeah, like a visual in my head of okay. something, you know. And then like I'll just work off of that. That's so dope, man. There's things that like, and those are a lot of times those are the things that like stay in black books and sketchbooks and like the pad that like. Because yeah, no it's sees. like more personal, yeah. you know. There's some things that are like super personal, like bro, this is kind of intense. I don't know if I want to put this out there, <laughs> you know. Like you're going through shit, and you know you just got to do it, you know. Yeah. But it could be intense for people to take in, especially like family or something. They don't see you for a while, like this guy drawing over there, bro. You know, yeah. Like, I mean, the first, right? you know? the first <laughs> couple of times I saw your art, like it was like, <laughs> wow, like this is like very visually stunning, right? Because yeah. it's, it's like, and and again, you've had different eras right like in um so having known you for a little while like watching your evolution as an artist and experimenting with different things and stuff it's always fun to watch people's progress through time like as they develop and hone in their arts their skill yeah, that's cool you know, like you I appreciate that i appreciate that you guys you know you've been following me like that like for a, little, for a while now yeah you know, like been, been a while very uh supportive yeah. nah, man cool. we we love it um and you know i think i think one of the things that's um often i don't know I'll say overlooked, right? Because in a, you know, content creator society that we live in, right? Where everybody's just trying to make a thing and somehow figure out a way to monetize that, right? There's aspects of uh, people, right? That are like, hey, man, I'm just trying to make a buck. But there's also people that are like, I just like making art. Mm -hmm. And like the line between that is very hard to de like determine who's doing this for real and who's like kind of phoning it in. Well, it's also hard. It's a hard line for the artist himself to just be on, mm. you know? you're a creator and you're like well i could make money doing this yeah you know what i mean like right. everybody you know like there's the love aspect of it yes. but then there's like okay there's like what's it called uh well we don't need to go there but um it's just you know an opportunity knocks you know when you see you know an opportunity for a career you know, it's like anything else you know what well, you know obviously you're gonna try to make money you know doing what you love mm -hmm. yep but but that's it's, it's really hard, hard. it's yeah. a hard yeah it's definitely a hard line to be on 
So in your eyes, what's like, <clears throat> what would be, if, if, it, if it's not now, what would be your dream job? Is, would it be with art? Yeah, I would say it would be with art. Um, and, what, and what would that look like? My dream job, honestly, my dream job would just to be to do whatever I want, whenever I want. Like, who wouldn't want to just like you know yeah, what I mean? So like, like the freedom to have your yeah, just like do whatever yeah. you want. Like you know what I mean? Like that would be awesome. It's just like that's not life, you know. Um, but if you wanted to just like yeah, you know, like in terms of like, of course, it would be like something involving my passion, you know, like whether it's tattooing or whether it's you know like. Teaching is definitely one of those things that's like falls in line with something that I've always wanted to do, you know. Um, the challenges that come with it is like that's different, you know. Nothing's gonna be perfect. You're not gonna show up to work and just like, oh, today's just great, and the kids are lovely, and everyone's so receptive, you know. <laughs> like, but still, it's like to see, you know, people getting inspired from what you came up with, you know, like that's very fulfilling. Yeah. Um, yeah, and just. I want, man. That's great. That's great. I mean, that's a dream, right? <laughs> yeah, that's a dream. Hey, just really the freedom like, to do whatever. You know, you want. I heard Bronson say that one time. I thought like that was like the most honest thing like someone could say because people were like, "Well, I want to do my passion. Like, I want to do this," and I was like, "I don't really want to do that. Like, I want to do that when I want. <laughs> yeah, like, just like I like. Well, I want to paint when I want to paint. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Other than that, I want to make memories with my family. You know, like with my friends. And that's like basically that's life. You know. Right. L- so. Let me let me ask you this. I. I I don't, I don't dabble in the art space, yeah. but what I do see is in these art exhibits or whatever, you'll see random artist coming in and his art is selling for an exuberant amount of money. How does one get there? How does, because art is subjective. Right, right, right. So how does, how does one go from, yeah, I love, I love, you know, doing this art to I have a showcase in New York City and thousands of people are coming to just either look or buy because I feel I think it's possible more possible now in 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 this day and age of technology but before that like like how do you how do you one how do you price it out I'm like hey this this piece right here is selling for 1.2 million dollars it's all a racket right. isn't it it's all a racket it's just yeah I think it's just like highly politicized type of thing like <laughs> just like any other don't you hate it like high art is just such yeah. an absolute farce I, I, it I've, is I've it heard, is it's who you know it's the connections yeah. it's how yes. embedded you are in the social world and who, i've heard that like most of people... these artists that have these studios that you see and are making that type of artwork and selling it for millions of dollars or whatever it is hundreds of thousands of their art basil or whatever or art basil however you want to say it um those people just we're fortunate enough to be in a family that had money. You know, it's like this generational wealth. That they've had, yeah. Or they're just like, most of them. I'm not saying all of them. but And I've, then others just, you know, probably made their way. They went to good schools and made the connections, mm, socialites. Yep, you know, that's crazy. It's a lot of socializing. Uh, Rubbing elbows like, with the right yeah, people. Ne- yeah. Nepotism. <clears throat> nepotism. I've heard, I've heard of, of that art is one of the ways that people have been passing down wealth. Because one is subjective, so let's say, let's say we're related, and uh, I can't just give you two million dollars mm-hmm. because the government's going to get involved. Mm-hmm. So now, or what they've been doing was, hey, here's this art piece worth two million dollars. Mm-hmm. Like that's how they're that's yeah. how they're doing. Because then now it's a it's a gift or it's it's not taxable, which is crazy. So that the fact that you say that, I'm like, I wonder if it. If, if it's all been that or, yeah. or, or around that a way of the, people you know, kind of circumventing the, the taxes of the government. Man. Of absolutely. Yeah. Anyway, on please. the other side of that, like you said, with social media and all that, you get all the exposure, but then it's super saturated too. Yeah. And then there's also comes the followers and the likes and the subscribers and all that stuff, which is like the people, you know, mm-hmm. you got to have that steez already. <laughs> yep. In whatever it was, you know, yeah. Crazy. like you could have been, you know, like a nasty chef and got popular just like cooking, you know. Yeah, and it then t- it and takes then a like, little bit, like a little then, viral like, because you got 
popular cooking and people went to your restaurant and they invited you out here and then now you're flying over here and then people you got caught on Instagram and now you went viral because um, the celebrity you were caught with this celebrity now you're doing celebrity stuff and then Chain you decided to yeah. instead of doing the chef stuff now you want to do another passion on top of that and that's what people have been doing it's just like bubbling on top of that yes. and that's why everybody's so like entrepreneurial now. a lot of people are not everybody but I think a lot of us like look at that you know which is kind of dangerous too I feel like to look at that like social media and be like i could do that but it's not like that easy you know so there is not to cut you off there is a documentary on netflix i forgot the name of it but it breaks down a lot of what you asked uh a little some of the things that i've heard that i can remember i believe and i'm, I'm most likely i'm wrong but please correct me is that the art dealer is a huge part of how this works so the art, art dealer is like the medium pretty much the guy that let's say you are an artist and you have these hundred pieces, he'll go to you and be like, give me these pieces. I'm going to bring this and sell them to my sellers for exumers about some money that have no idea who you are. But once I sell these and know, Hey, these are Javier Hernandez pieces. And I sell these for a hundred thousand, 200,000. Now your name is getting around other people. And then, Hey, I need another hundred pieces. Cause now your name is getting around. I need to put them out there. But the art dealer is that guy. That makes because he can't go out there and be like, hey guys, um, I'm selling this one for a hundred thousand. They're gonna be like, who the hell are you? I don't know who you are. But if you have that, it's like the A and R in the music business. Yeah, so it's kind of the same. But but the art dealer again, um, it happens a lot in New York. I forgot that place. It's a uh, it's a museum that a lot of the famous art, well, a lot of fake ones actually found. I'm sure you heard you heard about this. There's a documentary it breaks down how these fakes. I'm talking about. They needed experts to look so, so deep into the painting to figure out that they're fake. That's how good these fakes were. And they figured out they were coming in from China. <laughs> but this is the thing wow. that to me that to yeah. me was was interesting is that if you're this good to do like a fake to the point that you why don't you do your own artwork right. and sell it right. and be a beast at it? But then, then I started thinking, I was like, you need that art dealer. Yeah. Again, it's there's, not like there's so I, many beasts. That's, what I'm, that's what I'm saying. So yeah. it's so saturated, like you said, that that art dealer is the guy that I, he has to say, be like, let me see your shit. Let me get it out there. And so that's the part that I saw with the community that the art dealer is a huge part on how much a painting is going to be because he's, he has the sellers that are rich people because they want to get tax write offs and whatnot. And it's through art. They use art a lot because, I, like you said, it's, there's some, some paintings that go for two to five to five million. It's like, Who's making these prices up? Like, why are they worth that much? And it's those people, like the people that are with the money. So, I mean, it's certainly been said that high art is like basically money laundering. Yeah. Right? Like, I mean, let's just call a spade a spade, right? Like, it's yeah. definitely happening. There's no way it's not happening. Yeah. I've found out about a photographer that, and I don't know if it's money, money laundering or not, but just he sells his pictures, uh, like fine art, okay. for thousands of dollars. But the pictures that he's selling, an example, it's a micro, it's a macro shot of a penny. Okay. He takes a penny in the micro lens. It goes real tight on small objects, but he blows it up so big. So now you have a picture of a random penny in super high detail so weird. on a white background. It looks crazy, <laughs> but I'm like, the, the artist in me, I'm like, it's 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 so it's stupid, yes. but I'm like intrigued. I'm like, it's kind of clever, but but now isn't pennies. that the internet though? That's the internet in a nutshell. It's like <laughs> why? How are they? How are they making money with this? Over and over again. Anyway, I don't mean. Not, but not only pennies. Another one that I think he went viral for, or it got really popular. He took it's a sequence of pictures, and he sells it in a set of four of gummy bears. It. I'm telling you, it sounds stupid, but the. The color, the color punch on a white background, let's say it's red, green, yellow, whatever the, yeah. the fourth gummy bear is. And he had it up in his in his studio. I'm like, man, I never thought that putting pictures of gummy bears on a wall would look clever. That's key word. You never thought. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's like. Or key. And he, yeah, yeah. And, and <laughs> he's selling these. And he did the same thing with like a dot, like a Canadian dollar bill. It's. It sounds stupid. Okay. But it's crazy. We're going to take a deeper dive here. 
-hmm. Okay, you guys ready? Buckle up. All right. I spent some time recently (laughs) on the internet, as one does, watching the YouTube. I discovered a side gig. Okay. It sounds very similar to what you're describing. And it was as such a very basic concept. You take anything you could like, uh, inspiration. Okay. So like words, words on a white background, right? Uh, there's one right here, just off camera. Great things in business <laughs> are never done by one person. They're often done by a team of people. Okay. Take that, put it on a canvas. Okay. Use a third party to, to do this for you. And then you're going to take that, have them, you're going to make an Etsy store. And now you're going to sell that piece of garbage. Okay. Piece of garbage that you just spit out. You're going to have a third party, print it out for you, ship it to the customer and you get money. Zero. There was some effort. The effort was you had to make the store and do the stuff. So I'm just thinking about you. You talking about a guy taking a picture of pennies, macro shots or gummies, making bank. This is what I'm saying. Like, then so that's the difference between putting soul and passion into yes! work and just oh. being a hustler. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's different. Chef's you kiss. Wow. That's this is a beautiful. And then at the end, back, and man. then at the end, you know, like what rewards do you reap from that? You know, like besides just money, right? Mm-hmm. Money is good. Not bad. What if that funds your ability to do whatever you want? Let's keep, do it. Keep making those at sea. Let's, <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. Honestly, man. Listen, if right no, now, I mean, um, if I started selling pictures of tables, yeah, and someone bought one of my pictures for ten thousand dollars, <laughs> you best believe I'm gonna start looking at every table <laughs> and getting some crazy angles of these yep. tables. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You know what though? With saying like whatever you want, right? Like, because we do want to do whatever we want, right? But yeah, there's like responsibility. That comes yes. And that's that's the other aspect. You got to know that you you would be responsible enough with your time to be able to do whatever it is that you want, right? Like, mm, that is well said, right? Because you could mm. go too far one way or the other. You could be well, yeah, too lazy yeah. or Imagine too Imagine if you, people could do whatever they want, you know, which a lot of people are doing whatever yeah. they want. You know, a lot of people do do whatever they want right now. You know what I'm saying? They're just like chilling. Mm. But what are they doing with their time? You know, what are they doing with their family? If they have a family or like, what are they doing to be a productive human and yeah. contribute to contribute. society? Yeah. Contribute no, man, to that's the universe, the yeah. society. But I, I even use myself too, in a way, you know, I even use myself as, as an example. I, I quote unquote, do what I love for a living photography, yeah. but the type of photography that I do is not the photography that I love. Like I do a lot of right, right. real estate, corporate stuff. Like, I'm using what I love doing mm-hmm. as a way of, of making a living. Right. But if I could just, my dream scenario would be if I can just go through life and take pictures of what inspires me and sell that and make money, that would be the dream. Right, right. But is that is that realistic? Right, right. Who knows? Mm. Maybe. Yeah, like if I could just take go on a camping trip and paint for a weekend cave and sculpt or something for a while and then you know what i mean and, and, there, and there's people that do there's there's people that do that yeah like um yeah. I, i'll use i use fashion like i know um and this is like a this is a local lady and from long meadow she sells koozies yes cup koozies and my uh my friend's wife buys them it's it, and it sounds crazy but these koozies sell from anywhere between $25 to like $75. But she doesn't she doesn't sell them. They're just not available on her website. She does like a oh, these are going to come out this day and they'll sell out within minutes. And that's kind of the example Love of Love Mitch. Yes. Love Mitch, right? I yes. was like I knew it was like coming to me. Love Mitch. Shout out to Love Mitch. Yeah, and that's probably the greatest way to do it cuz it's like, you know what? Today I feel inspired to create this piece of art. And the fact that she has a following that she'll put out uh, her next her next mm-hmm. creation and people buy it instantly, I'm like, that's perfect. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, she's now she can just go when she's inspired. And it's a beautiful thing. It's great. Yeah, but she created a brand. Yeah, she so did. in order, and that's the hard part, is that because in order to create that, you have to put out and put out and put out to the point that the people that is behind you is like they can't wait for your next project. Like you said, like 
they're, they're probably waiting for like, if she said, all right, guys, here it is. It's probably like, oh my God, I can't wait. So to get to that point, I absolutely agree that, yes, like it, it's, a, it's a very saturated world. Like when it comes to the art world, can you honestly look at something and go, eh, that doesn't look too good? Because like you said, it's relative. Yeah. And I've seen subjective, some stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah subjective subject. And I see some stuff, but I go, what is this? Mm-hmm. But it's probably thousands of dollars from this <laughs> famous painter from yep. France. Yep. And, and then I'm saying is his brand has built so high that he could literally do anything and he's going to sell out and it's going to be considered as something artistic. Like, oh, this is beautiful. And that's something that I, I love art, but sometimes my eye can only go so far. Yeah. Art like, can you know be what I'm really saying? annoying even for artists, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. So, like, when I look at something, <laughs> I want it. Give me I want a break. What is this? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, super annoying. Yeah. Like, I want something to be like, this is cool. Like, because this, that, and the third. Not because you look at it in an angle and it's because <laughs> yeah, of this. We, like, nah, that's that. too much. Get I want to look here. something, look at it and go, whoa, that's, that's Although cool. sometimes there's some people that do sculptures. That depending what angle you look at it is different. That's incredible. Mm-hmm. That stuff is, yeah. is like it's a pile of rubbish. And you I was just gonna say, yeah, yeah, yeah. art the, is the garbage very subjective, you know, because there yes. are some stuff that I just look at and some, you know, especially as an artist too, you know, just like you get a feeling from it, you know, mm-hmm. it doesn't necessarily have to be something, you know, it could be very minimal. It could be, you know, like something like that. That's very, you know, abstract. You know, somebody might look at it and just be like, eh, what is that? You know. Yeah. But, you know, another person gets some kind of a feeling from it or like the color palette on there, you know, or it might match in their room, you know, or something, you know, people like it for different reasons, you know, so that's, that's where it's just like, well, you know, where we're talking about pricing of art and how that happened. That's all that, I, that's probably the hardest way to, the, the hardest thing about it. Like yeah, how for you... someone to see a dot in the middle of a 50 by 50 foot canvas or something, you know, and be like, <laughs> yeah. I call it art. Right. Yeah, yeah. You know, like. <laughs> earth yeah <laughs> but somebody might look at that and be like wow. you know not for nothing like, i saw this guy I'm feeling this right now you know like <laughs> i need yeah, this yeah i saw this guy you on know? tiktok and he does uh abstract art I and mean, i think i told you about it or i might have sent you sign mm-hmm. of it and his tiktok he just shows him creating his his pieces and he's literally just throwing paint at the canvas some of it he's like he's doing different strokes with different colors but it's for face value. It's like that's so simple. But mm. there was something I'm just like, that's dope. Yeah, it looks cool. I'm because like, that's when you dope. start to realize that like paint moves on its own and it looks good on its own sometimes, yeah. like just this organic movement of paint, and you just go with it. One of the first people to do that was Jackson Pollock. You know, he just started accidentally, you know, splattered some paint on the canvas, and he was struggling with like what to make next. You know, he was a successful artist, but extremely alcoholic and depressed, and just like struggling with what he was going to come out with next, you know, the next big thing. That's and another, that, that's another pressure too on its own. Started making that, started doing that, splattering paint everywhere. And I just see that everywhere. You know, kids do that. Yeah. Drip. It's like a kid made it, but he was like the first one. It was like monumental, you know, now a Pollock sells for millions of dollars. Yeah. That's crazy. That is crazy. Now Literally you mentioned, you millions, mentioned, you yeah. mentioned him. <clears throat> Who would you say, you have any artists that were like inspirational or kind of that you, you kind of like look at and you're like, this person's art kind of really speaks to me. <clears throat> yeah. I'd have to say like growing up, <clears throat> excuse me at first, um, you know, I just start, you know, you start doodling and so you're just passionate about art as a kid. And uh, my brother started doing a little like, just like tags, like graffiti and stuff. And I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. And then I saw another kid doing that school like wow style letters and cool i thought ass. that was yeah, yeah. I, was, I was good with those cool ass, yeah. man. so he was doing like this wow style and i was like it's like just intermingling of letters and stuff and arrows everywhere and all that i was like oh that's cool i want to do that so i started trying to do that and then i got into graffiti and then graffiti is what got me like more dedicated to just drawing right in general and then i was introduced to classic artists through graffiti because some of the graffiti artists I was into were doing classic, were, were incorporating classic pieces into their murals and stuff. You know, these guys were like legends, you know, like FX crew in New York City. Um, and I saw this on video 
And then I got to like accidentally stumbled upon a mural. Like when I was a kid too. Wow. The same mural that I was seeing on video. I was like, what the heck? You know, it was so dope. <laughs> wow. You know, so then my friend was like his um his grandmother was like his guardian and would take him to like the museums and stuff. And he was like really into art and all that and told him about he told me about Dali. Mm. You know, he's like, Yeah, I'm gonna go see an exhibit. I'm like, it was Dali. And he showed me some stuff. I was like, oh shoot, it was like surreal. It was like blew my mind. So that's how I, you know, th- those were my main inspirations, I would say, you know, as far as like classic artists, it was more graffiti. And then it came like Dali kind of got introduced to me through graffiti. And then that's, and then my um, cousin as well, Elisa Mezcobal, I always knew was a painter. So then when I was introduced into painting, like it just clicked because my work looked like his for some reason. It was like, it was very similar. And even though we weren't very like, we weren't connected, we didn't speak like that or anything. It was like somehow... You know, it was like our artwork was very similar. So then, you know, I, my cousin himself was a big inspiration for me. And then I just so on and so forth. Like that whole scene, like the classic art and like the um, the um, modern art movement of like the 40s and all that. For some reason, I got into that, like abstract expressionism and things like that. I got into, you know, like things that I guess like at that age you wouldn't typically get into. Really. How old were you when you first like got, got introduced to Dali and all that? I would say like 16 ish. Okay. And then like around like 17, no, I would say like 15, 16. And then right around that same time is when I started to like dabble with painting. Yeah. So the first time I started painting, I was into BMX too. And I was super <laughs> wow. into my bike, you know, like that was all I wanted to do. You remember that, yep. you know? But like one day I, um, <clears throat> I got like, I had a cardboard that I would break dance on and, um, I had some tempera paint back of the basement and i just i just wanted to paint i just started painting so i painted like this big character on there and i was like oh this is so cool (laughs) i felt so good about it yeah you know but i was going like my friend's house to spend the weekend and like just go ride bikes and stuff but i was like kept thinking about that you know and i was like yo that's it like it's painting you know like painting is my thing you know like i love that that's that's really cool just how like the the organic development of whatever your expression turned into right like everybody's story is a little bit different um i have a question it's related to the art and it's in relation to it's kind of a a, you know artist trope right like people often like musicians or like you know singing i'm thinking about i'm sorry i'm thinking about songs that were written during very dark times of an artist's life and that being the muse for this incredible (laughs) masterful piece of thing that 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 person was able to express um and we have a lot of things. I'm not going to name any specifics, but do you have, you know, feel free to share as much or as little as you want, but like, do you have those moments where you were like, Oh my God, I, I feel so strongly this particular feeling like, and yeah. then you use that to just express and let out some of the gas. Yes. I did that probably like for the first time when I was like around like maybe like 17, 18, mm-hmm. I was just upset with like a girlfriend or something. Yeah. You know, it was like, so it was a girl. Yeah, like she was, you know, like she was supposed oh, to hang out or something, like on a holiday, and she like she like ditched or something. I don't know, something. Dumb, you know, but I was pissed, right? So like, I just hit the canvas. That was the first time I ever did that. But as like I grew up, and now even now, you know, like you start to realize more and more of like how much, you know, these exp- these feelings and expression was coming out in your work maybe before and even now, or yeah. like you know, yeah. you kind of reflect back on it. Sometimes you don't know. It's like reflect point. back on it and you're like, oh, I didn't notice as I was people doing will it. notice and tell you, but you yeah. won't know yourself. <laughs> yeah. Like my teachers, you know, like my my teacher in my senior year is the one who actually introduced me like painting. She was like, you need to like paint how you draw, mm-hmm. you know, and that's where like I forget it. That's where like it just blew up. You know? I started like really painting, like really getting into canvases and stuff. Yeah. But she was like, you're all right. Like, <laughs> I feel like you got some stuff going on, <laughs> you know, like looking at my artwork, you know, like. And it's funny because I see some students now and I'm like, I see their work and I'm like, I could tell, you know, it's like, yeah, this kid's got some something, you know, like there's some anger in there or something or like, you know, there's something in there, you know, but you never know. That's the thing though, man. You just like, never know. On the like, surface, some, so much of us are just like, I'm okay, but like deep down, there's so much shit going on, right? right and right. so we have these mediums like art to just be like, and you just get some of it out, right? Because right. you can't always put it into words, man. Sometimes these states could put you in a place where you're really creative. Sometimes these states could put you in a place where, you know, that mindset could put you in a place where you don't want to do anything. Mm. And then sometimes you're in a great state of mind. 
so you don't do anything or your work just is different and you don't really like it because it lacks that soul. You know what I'm saying? Like, and sometimes you need it, bro. You need the pain in life sometimes to like really, that's the thing with life is like pain and, yeah. and joy mm -hmm. is like, it's right on the cusp. It's like, you gotta, in order to experience one, you have to have the other one too. You know? yeah. that's facts. That's, yep. that's big facts. And it's like, you gotta kind of be on the line, like teeter, yeah. you know, to really experience life. I feel. Wow. Live on the edge. I mean, it's, it's just so well said, man. It's so well said. And I, and I think to anybody who's listening to this, right? Like, you know, we all express ourselves in many different ways and we all have our different arts and talents, you know, and, I think the internet gives us a little bit of like a place to output some of that socially, just like, ah, oh, here's what I'm feeling. Like I'll think I'll go back and I'm talking about like looking back some of the photos that I edited way, way back when, you know, when I was going through my hardships and whatnot, and like, they're just sad or like, there's a little bit of like hurt on the pays or that's like, wow, you're really you're going through it back then. You know what I mean? And yeah, then like, yeah. But it's like a marker in time, right? So like you always have that reference point and like artists always have that like catalog of stuff they've done. And to your point about your like notebook, right? Right, that's right. some personal shit there. Not everybody's right, going right, to get right. to see that, you know, right, right. maybe, maybe a close friend, but like, you know, you know, what's funny that you, <clears throat> you mentioned that <clears throat> when I got into photography, I did it cause I was really, I was really upset where I was in life with my job <clears throat> and other things. So there was certain photographer style or, or for, editing styles that I fell in love with mm. and mine was a dark and moody. Like one of my, one of my good friends, uh, he's been a photographer for over 20 years. The way he shoots, everything's bright, airy, it's like crisp. <laughs> and then he was like, I was always really hard on myself. I was like, oh, my pictures don't look like yours. Mm -hmm. And he was always like fascinated with the pictures I was doing. Cause mine mm. were always like, Nah, let me crush these blacks. Let me like, mm. let me edge. get it. Let, let me bring more let, edge to this. Let me mm. make it real grainy. And then people started contacting me for that style. Yeah. Uh, and it's funny now. It's like, all right, that was, I was just going through, yeah. through some dark stuff. And, it's always and like my, that too. My, my pictures were, if you look at, even, even some of the stuff that I do now, I still maintain that because that's kind of, people look for that now. Yeah. Um, but even the early stuff, it's just everything's like, oh, that's moody. <laughs> <laughs> this is, um, it's, it's interesting. I'm listening to you and you. It's like you said, it's, it seems like you have to go through this dark place. What I'm hearing is that through this darkness, you guys kind of find yourself. And kind of once you find yourself, it's like it's pretty much me against this darkness. It's who's going to come on top type of thing. Like you have to just keep keep believing in yourself, believing, believing to the point that you get to look where you are now and you get to whatever you're going to get. So it gets to the, like you said, it's, it's you get really, you can get really creative and really it's like, yo, this is all I have now. But it seems like you have to get to that point, whatever that point is to you or to you. Like you said, that darkness. Then you go, damn, I, I really have to with just me and whatever this is that I'm facing. And what I'm listening to what you just said is that perseverance is a mother F. Mm. So um, and not everybody has that. You know, you can you can go have an obstacle and be like, that's it, I don't want to do it anymore. Or you can be like, all right, I have to do it differently. What can I learn from this and keep going and going and going and Persevering after something, you know, you get knocked down and you're in a dark place is very difficult. So working in the school, I can understand, like, just how some of these kids, you know, every day, it's just like another day they go, Ugh. and we may not understand it. So hearing you, is like, I can, I can, I can see and hearing you too, it's like, damn, you really got to go through some shit sometimes to understand who you really are and get out of it yourself. Not like, oh, I got help works enough, but sometimes yourself, you got to go through it. So. And you guys speak to that kind of like, damn, that's, that's something that I, I can understand. Yeah, and, and it's crazy because <clears throat> for me, since it was an outlet, I like, I dove into it. Like, right. I would be at my job, and if I was there for eight hours, six of those eight hours, <laughs> YouTube was going yep. with different things, mm -hmm. and I just got into it. It was, it was, it was crazy. Mm -hmm. It was crazy. Wow. It's always a good feeling, man, when you go down the rabbit hole on something that you're just like so into, like a project you're into. Or you know, if only we could do that mm -hmm. and feel, have that feeling, you know, for everything all the time, you know, like, but again, balance, the, the biggest, you can't enjoy that yeah. without having those moments. Cause the, if we were flooded with that all the time, you know, the biggest yeah. reward for me was like, I'll learn something or see something that someone did or talking about something. I'm like, I got to try something. Let, let me see. Like, how can I incorporate that? 
Mm-hmm. And then I'll go out and take a picture. I'm like, I did it. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. dope. Mm-hmm. That's dope. And then. Now you have that mm-hmm. in your bag of. My plan was never to be become a photographer. It was just always YouTube. YouTube. Yeah. I was like, let me do YouTube. And then my buddy Gio, he was like, he was like, you should do something with this. Which is, it's funny how kind of that stuff happens. It's true, man. It's always like the, you know, it's a little bit of luck. It's a little bit of opportunity and knowing the right people, you know, the right mix. Um, but yeah, I think this is a great place to wrap this up. Soul Cosm, Javier Hernandez. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us on the Cosme. I really Thanks, appreciate man. it. Uh, I will make sure to link all of the socials and the links to his store. Uh, as a matter of fact, they're already linked. They've been linked since we had your art there by this. Uh, so it's on there. If you guys want to buy some arts uh, or follow him on Instagram. Uh, Rick's not going to do it. I'm still going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> what? He may do it now. I might. I might. Maybe I might. Maybe I might. All right, guys. Thanks so much for joining us. Peace out. Peace.